13 investigates has been reporting on proposed legislation that would limit social media's grip on teenagers. We've told you about these two bills that are aimed at making online platforms less addictive. Well, now Tessa Ventulin spoke with a group of uh, Shaker High School students. You heard from them last night about how they feel about the crackdown. And today Tessa is here to explain what college students are saying about all of this and their take on this uh, effort to limit the activity. Tessa. Yeah. Hi, Sabrina. So I spoke to four U Albany students, even though these bills would not affect anyone over 18 if passed into law. I wanted to get their opinions on social media because because they're young and part of the generation that grew up online. But I've read news articles on my phone. I've read social media posts. JT, James, Amal, and Caitlin all agreed to sit down with 13 investigates to discuss social media. All four of them tell me they have several social media accounts. They say it's how they connect with friends. TikTok or like the reels, like it's that icebreaker into a conversation now also. Like within like that small group of friends you may have, maybe four people, one person sends like a random video in there and then the conversation started. It's not a, like a, hey, what's up anymore? Or what are you up to? It's like, look at this. Now tell me what, what's going on. Like, you know, like it's that, it's that icebreaker within that uh, social media conversation now. These two proposed bills would force social media companies to limit children's access to what it calls addictive social media feeds, ban notifications in the middle of the night, and kick kids offline if they spend too much time scrolling. Which made me wonder. How active would you guys say you're on, like, these platforms very active yeah. yeah every day multiple hours throughout the day you would say you're always online basically yeah, yeah. I feel like it's almost a requirement mm -hmm. in our generation like so many people are on it you almost have to be on it to be cool to be hip to know what people are talking about I mean I know for me I'm a journalism major and so we're told you should be on Twitter you should get a, a, an account with X because everyone else is on it and also it's a way for journalists for you to share your work with people and also for you to see what other people are posting so for different fields I think particularly journalism it's even more important um, to despite the impacts it has on mental health, especially youth mental health, you know, the impacts it has on doing other work and being productive. Um, but I definitely feel like it's almost a prerequisite to know what's going on, you know, if you're our age. I agree. Yeah, I, um, as an aspiring journalist, I definitely find myself getting almost 90% of my news from online now. You heard one of the students in the group, JT Stone, mention mental health. It's one of the main concerns with social media. Live at 5 o'clock, one of the U Albany students says she went down a dark social media wormhole as a kid and it influenced an eating disorder and physical self-harm. We'll explain that live at 5. That's been doing. Thank you very much. Lots of scary stuff. It's I mean, a huge there, topic. There, yeah. are, there are great things about social media, but there are some frightening things as there well. There sure are. Yeah. And it's hard for us to really, as we get older, to really understand yeah. what's going on with all the young yeah. people on it.